Welcome back to the Legacy Podcast, guys. Today's episode has Sonia Kilji. She is an entrepreneur and social media influencer. She teaches people how to create six figures online. And she also is the owner of a Facebook motivational page called Losers to Legends that has over a million likes. And on top of that, she is a regular contributor to the Huffington Post. Thank you so much for taking the time out, Sonia, for speaking with me today. Oh, of course. I'm excited. I love, um, I love talking about this stuff. So the problem will be like shutting me up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, all right, to get straight into this, I mean, when I was just looking through some of your content, the first thing that I, I thought um, or that I came across was your mindset article on your personal blog. And you ended that very powerfully saying that above financials and above material objects, it was the legacy that mattered to you most. So I want to know, talk to me a little bit about that and, and what it means to you. Sure. That post specifically, I wrote it in almost one minute because like it just like spewed out. Like, you know, it was just like I was sitting there and I was like, man, it's just like a, ton like a tunnel. Like I just am going deeper and deeper and legacy is at the very end of this. Like I want to be someone. I want to die being someone. I don't want to die average. That's like my biggest fear and my biggest driving factor is when I die, I do not want to just be like, Oh, you know, just a few people know who I am. Like, I, I imagine my funeral in, like, specific detail. Like, I want the whole world to know that I'm gone. Yeah. And that's just, like, really, I'm sure that's, like, irrational in some ways, too. But I think a lot of people can relate to that. Like, um, they really want to be someone. And they really want to have come into this life and have given it at all and made, like, a huge, huge impact that expands exponentially. And... So to talk about legacy in the terms of my work today, um, there's two aspects of it. One is that I'm in education, right? So I help empower youth and adults alike and train them and, and hopefully give them skills that will better their lives and then uh, their, their families' futures. But on the second end of that, I think of social media where I spend a lot of my time as legacy building because when I'm dead, you're going to be able to pull up my videos. You're going to be able to see this podcast. You're going to be able to see my articles. And my footprint will be here no matter what. On, online and I think that is one of the most beautiful like I can't have ever imagined living in any other time because I get to leave traces of my personality and traces of my wisdom and traces of my my soul on the internet like things that connected you to me I'll be able to connect with people like you even after I'm gone and that's just like a very emotional uh, I think thought for me yeah for sure no it's something that I've definitely thought about recently as well and it's amazing because we live in a time where we can actually do that before it was very difficult to do that. And, and I think for the most part, it's only if you wrote a book, would you, would you be able to tell your story or, you know, share your knowledge? And I think that's just going on a side tangent. I think that's why it's so important to read because the half the population that, that is not around anymore from hundreds of years ago, you know, there were some smart, smart people there, but they, they didn't have access to create podcasts or to create videos. They wrote books, they wrote lectures. So it's ignorant to think that, you know, everything school teaches you is enough. You need to go out and do your own research and see the hundreds of millions of people who live before you and what they actually learned and shared in their lives. Because each of us has a purpose. They had theirs, whatever it may be. And you'll only find out what it is if, if you go back and read the work that they, that they wrote. I um, fully agree with that. And I always say, like, reading is like having a conversation, like going out to dinner with the greatest minds. So if I went out to dinner with, like, Tony Robbins, for example, and had, like, the best conversation of my life, and just, like, how much would people pay for that, right? That's like reading his book. That's like him telling you, like, here is some of the most valuable things that are in my mind. And so that's the way I kind of see it. And I'm an avid, avid reader and writer. So fully on the same page with you about that yeah definitely i love it so i mean you know the way you talk now like you talk so passionately about legacy and about your funeral and thinking about things like that so far ahead what was it that got you to start thinking in that in that direction i i can't tell you what started it because it's always been the way that i am i've always like it's so weird i'm pretty sure someone's gonna come diagnose me when they hear your podcast <laughs> but like you know like in those games where they have like the the sand clocks or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I forgot what they're called, right? And like every grain falls. Yep, yep. Where I feel like there's like a sand clock like in my like body and I can feel every grain and I can feel every minute of my life passing me by and just like 
this voracious appetite to like make the most of that little like piece of sand. So I don't know when that started for me, but it's, it's like crazy. Like I just, I move so fast. I execute so fast. I'm just constantly working, constantly exploring the world. Like I don't do average things in life because I don't feel like I have the time to just sit there. Like if, for example, like if I'm going out to dinner with someone and I just don't feel inspired by their energy, I won't do it again because I know that that's an hour I could have done something else with. Or very rarely do I sit and watch Netflix or something just because I just, I can't do that. Like I yeah, need, yeah. I yeah. need to be doing something that's <laughs> working on that legacy. And yeah. I know that we only have a finite amount of time. Who knows when I'll be out. So yeah, no, exactly. I, I, I literally want to like fist bump you through the screen. <laughs> there you go. Because <laughs> every, everything you said there literally is just reading my mind because I, the, what I tell people is like you've got a short period of time to create something that's going to last a long period of time, right? So you don't know how short that short period of time is. You know, for some people, you, you'll be gone at 20, 70, 60. You, know, you don't know. So I, I honestly feel like I'm, I'm on edge like you. Like I don't like sitting around watching TV or spending my time unplanned unless I've planned to spend it unplanned. Do you see what I mean? So yeah. it's a bit of a control freak, but it's like I feel like I've got that sand timer in me as well and I, I need to be reading something, listening to something, watching, writing, doing something to, to move ahead um, and to co continually ex execute on that vision. So, I mean, just going back a little bit when you were in school um, prior to, you know, going to... Uh, college and things like that what what was your character like then were you always this sort of person or did you, did you find that you evolved into this character um I was such a loser like <laughs> I was such a loser like well like okay I was very ambitious um in school so I was part of a newspaper I was one of the newspaper editors I played tennis I um was an officer for different organizations like I was just, I did like six or seven different extracurriculars I was an all-a student like I just, I was such a nerd. I was like all AP classes, except for like math, because I hate math. <laughs> um, I was, I was very driven. That much was, and so much so that I put myself into a deep depression because I pushed myself too hard, I think at times, which is a characteristic of several great people, I feel. So I got made fun of quite a bit for being like emo. And also I didn't know how to wear eyeliner. So it would just be all over. <laughs> so um, I got, it's funny because, um, yeah, I was just such a loser, man. Like I was just... <laughs> And I, I had some really, really sh like shitty personal things going on at that time. So, yeah. uh, you know what? Just, uh, I was in a relationship where I wasn't allowed to do anything. Like he forbade me from like having friends and like reaching my full potential, which I mean, if you can imagine that was like really, really tough. And I don't know why I put up with it, but it's like holding a hot coal, right? And it's just going to burn through your hand eventually. So high school was a very difficult time. Um, in college, I just kind of like stopped trying a little bit because I just tried so hard in high school and I'm like, wait, it didn't matter. So let me just see what happens in college. But um, I did some really fun things in college. Like I was part of a sales program. So I'm really nerdy. Yeah, so what I did in college was, um, I was like, you know what, let me challenge myself with something that you can't learn off of a book. So my program actually, um, that I went to for school, it was based off of real world sales. So if you didn't meet your quota or exceed it, you failed college. So it was really fun for me because that wasn't my strength. And I developed sales skills at that point, which have been the number one most valuable skill that I have in my journey of entrepreneurship. So from loser to kind of normal. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and on to legend next. <laughs> on to legend next, exactly. yes. That's, that's the long story. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, on that note then, I mean, you know, the page loses to legends. When I, that, that's how I first stumbled across your content and the stuff that you were talking about online. And I just found the name so intriguing. So I had to reach out and, you know, see what I could find out about you. And uh, tell me about how you actually came across that page um, and acquired it in the first place. Sure. Um, so actually I was, um, I part of it like a telegram group. So if anyone doesn't know what telegram is, it's just how influencers and bloggers talk to each other and collaborate. So, um, when I was on this group, I was part of a group and I saw this person who posted, um, I can give you 10,000 followers for $300. And I was like, there's no way, come on, this is a scam. I messaged this guy. I'm like, come on, like, what is your, what is your like 
you know, what are you trying to do? And he's like, no, I can't help your account because it's a personal brand. And I'm like, okay, so he's actually ethical. Like, because if, if he didn't want, he wanted, he could have just taken my money. Um, he's like, no, I only, I deliver results and I deliver real results. So, uh, you know, I give you a series of shout outs and giveaways on my page that will get you that, that following. And I was like, really intrigued by this guy. So he's, um, he's, uh, he's my new friend. I don't know if he calls me his friend yet, but <laughs> <laughs> um, um, his name is just fear and he lives in India. So um, he runs this page called Males Life on Facebook, which has about 2.5 million followers. And so in total, I think he has a network of about 5 million, which is blows my mind. And when I started getting to talk to him, I'm like, what do you do? Like, what do you do to get this and achieve this? And he's like, oh, you know, I just, um, I just post consistently. Like, that's all I do. And I'm like, no one just posts consistently <laughs> and gets 5 million followers. I'm going to get your secrets, all of them. <laughs> and so I guess, I don't know, like he was just really nice to me. And so what ended up happening is he said that he had this Instagram page for sale, Losers to Legends, but he's like, I can't, the, and I'm like, why are you selling it? And he's like, well, um, I sold the Facebook page already and um, I only have the Instagram page left. And I was like, okay, like, you know, it was a really, really good price, like really good price. And it was like 40,000 followers on there. So I was like, you know what? I can go with this. Like, let's just see what happens. Like, so I thought, you know what, let me make my strategy where I'm building my personal brand and I have like a motivational brand and they feed each other. So that became my strategy, which by the way, is a fantastic, fantastic strategy for anyone because personal brands just go grow slower in nature. It's much harder, but motivational brands can explode overnight. So it's really useful. So anyway, um, that was that. I bought his Instagram page and I went to sleep and I woke up later that week in the morning to pray, which normally I don't wake up in the morning to pray, but I just did that. I just, I don't know what happened. I just, my eyes popped open and I just had a voice in me that was like, message him, message him right now and tell him you want his Facebook page. At this point, I thought it had sold already. So I messaged him and I'm like, I'm going to buy your Facebook page. I want it. Like I want it really badly. And he's like, it's already pending sale. I'm like, oh, wait, the sale hasn't gone through. And th my ears just perked up. And then, and then I was like, how much do you want for it? And then I was, and he told me a price. I was like, okay, I'll give you more and I'll give it to you today. And he's like, okay, um, <laughs> deal. And I was like, and one more, I want to be business partners with you because you're phenomenal and I want to work with you. And he's like, deal. And that happened last month. <laughs> wow. That's, that's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So that, that was, oh, but there's a huge lesson on there, by the way, by the way, huge lesson of my life was learned at that moment. You can learn all the algorithms, all the growth hacks, whatever in the world. But the number one thing that has accelerated my career in any phase of my life was meeting the right person. Yeah. Relationships will excel you further than anything. So now all I spend my time doing, just like I network because yeah. Like screw everything else, the right person, that right connection, and just that genuine friendship will accelerate me further than anyone else. So yeah, that, that's where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. No, 100%. I completely agree. And it's something I started doing earlier this year as well. Is heavily focusing on networking. And it's funny because I think it's what I needed to grow my community and my brand um, to where it is today and where it's going to be going over the next few months and years. And it only happened because I met the right person, you know. And meeting that person, they pushed me and uh, sort of pushed me and pulled me to get the right answers out of, my, uh, out of me. And told me that, you know, you, you need to focus on um, reaching out to other influencers like yourself and many others that I've spoken to. And these people, like I always knew them um, and I always thought, you know, oh, one day, you know, I'll get to speak to them and I'll, I'll have a, a circle of friends and um, people that I speak to on a daily basis about this sort of stuff. But it never happened until now. And then I realized, oh, crap, you know, because I'm doing the right thing for, for me the doors are just starting to open up now and it's almost like the law of attraction as well you know because i was thinking about it so much i was like i want to have you know because i used to listen to other podcasts and i was like i want to have these type of fascinating conversations with influencers like when is it going to be my turn but and until i took the action and i was on the right path to actually building a community that's when everyone started coming to me and the doors were like yes we'll do it yes we'll do it yes we'll do it and i was like absolutely wow. and it's so easy to connect with people man i'm i talk to strangers all day long like I am so like not going to be able to raise my future children right because I'm like <laughs> I love talking to strangers talk to everyone yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think the key is beyond this conversation that we're having today for us to like 
I become friends with every person I meet online. Either it vibes or it doesn't, right? Yeah, like you can tell right away. There's some people where you talk to and you're like, okay, it's straight to business and move on. Yep. The key is to find those people that you can truly connect with and support. And my personal belief is to find at least 1,000 people in your life like that that are going to support you to the ends of the world, the ends of the earth, and just network. So for me, now that I've acquired a width of followers this year, 2018 for me is all going to be about depth really diving in, creating deeper, meaningful relationships and friendships. And I think you're on the same path. So it's really exciting. I'm, I'm really excited to see where it takes us. Yeah, no, for sure. No, same. And I think almost like just to get a bit philosophical on you, like we were earlier, um, <laughs> it, we, you cross paths with the right person at the right time as well. Because you might, you know, like me, I, you know, I wanted to connect with those type of people years ago, but it wasn't the right time in my journey for me to do it. So if it happened, then it, it it may not have panned out in the right way because the idea for where, what I've got going on right now wasn't formed then, you know? Um, so you meet everyone at the right time. So, yeah. Yeah. I really think that that happens. Like for example, um, my business partner, um, for Bumble Brain Box. Okay. Obviously I had a background in early childhood education, but what I did not have, okay. What I was, uh, what I was for the first time was, you know, I didn't have medical skill like I don't I'm not a doctor right I'm not a psychologist so I had to have one before I could proceed well what ended up happening is I was actually Skyping with someone as a consultant in London and I just didn't I just me and her did not click I felt very uncomfortable she kept bringing up lawyers and her percentage and was very very concerned with me and what I'm gonna get so I was like man I'm about to launch this business I was getting out of an accelerator I needed a partner and some lady walks into my school, just walks into my school, and she's like, hey, by the way, I do first aid and CPR classes. We pick up her flyer, and we see that she has so many areas of expertise that she can train on, including child brain development, um, psychology, um, disorders, learning disorders, all of that. We ask her what her back, or my mom asked her what her background is. She had a degree in child psychology, um, medicine. She was a doctor, uh, a a degree in nutrition, an MBA, and I'm missing one. She had five degrees. Yeah, wow. Um, so it just blew her mind. And together we were able to create Bumble Brain Box, which was just such a beautiful concept for me about child brain development. And it was just meeting that right person. Like she just walked through the door right when I needed her to walk through the door. Like it yeah. was like people like this don't just walk through the door. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, um, and just the way that I met Jasphere and um, on Telegram, like it just, it happens so unexpectedly, yeah. right? So, so I, I think the law of attraction, I do believe in it, but I also believe in hard work. So, yeah, kind of Def yeah, definitely. So, I mean, it's interesting you say that about, um, you know, the psychologist walking in at the right time because so many people feel stuck because they don't have the right qualification to start that business. For example, you know, you wanted to start the business bubble brain box, but you had to have an accredited psychologist, but that didn't stop you. You know, it's not like, Oh, I, I need to go and get a degree now. Or, Oh my God, my dreams are shattered. I can't do it because I don't have the, the uh, right qualifications. It's, you know, just think outside the box in the sense that, okay, I've got the idea. Let me go find someone who can help me. That's it. You know, that's the biggest thing that gets entrepreneurs stuck. So this is what I learned from my father, okay? A lot of entrepreneurs teach entrepreneurship or mark, digital marketing because that's what they know and that's what they're comfortable with. However, my dad, um, he is a engineer by background, but he never in his life worked even a single day as an engineer. Um, he just created businesses after businesses after businesses, and they're so different. One is in real estate. One is in early childhood education. One is... Uh, Gosh, he had an architectural firm at one point. Then he's going into urgent care next. He's creating his own little urgent care. Is he a doctor? Is he a teacher? Is he a car mechanic? Is he um, a builder? No, he's none of these things. What he does is he goes out and he builds the team that can take care of it. He's the mastermind, the business, because all businesses are the same. I, I believe that. If you can do one business, you, you can do multiple businesses. So he, he's the genius behind it, but he gets the right team. He sets them up and then he moves on to the next project while oversight of all of it. So that for me was one of the most powerful lessons growing up to this day. He is my number one mentor and it hits home because I just read rich dad, poor dad. And I'm like, that's my life. Like I grew yeah, up with, yeah, yeah. I grew up with that. So yeah. I'm really lucky. I'm yeah. very, very lucky in the sense that I just had all the right people in my life. My husband is super supportive of me as well too. Like the best man in the world. So I just have met all the right people at the right time. And it's just been amazing.
Yeah, no, for sure. And I think it comes back to, you know, what you were saying earlier, that it's all about people, you know, having the right people. You can't do it on your own. You know, at the start, you're naive to think, oh, no, I don't need anyone. I can do this by myself. But it's not. It's not about that. It's about having the right people with the right information around you so that you could be propelled to the next level, whatever that may be for you. So um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's amazing that you've got uh, a dad that, that set that bar of expectation for yourself because you could see what he achieved in his own life. So, I mean, it's interesting because I know a lot of people listening probably won't have the same background as you. You know, they won't have parents who are super supportive and they've done it, you know, because I'm sure your parents are, especially your dad, from the sounds of it, is supportive of what you're doing only because he's gone through it himself. So I'm, I'm interested, like, what was it gr like growing up um, in terms of having a, an entrepreneur as a dad rather than a, a, a regular nine to five job? Um, so this is actually, I just want to, um, highlight the irony of this. Cause whenever you listen to podcasts, usually it's like rags to riches story and norm and mine is like riches to make sure I stay still, I still stay rich. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and that and people don't talk about that as much. You know yeah. why? Because a lot of people come are raised from someone who's successful and wealthy and they become so entitled that they can never prove their own worth and their value, right? Because they've always had everything handed to them. And that's been my whole entire, like that's been such a fire for me because I don't want to be that person. Like, of course, there's going to be haters in the future who say, oh, everything you are today is because your parents. That's true, okay? A hundred percent, that's true. But don't let that discredit the work that I'm putting into. Um, and so growing up with them, my dad worked constantly. However, he was really big on work-life balance. He was huge on it. That's why he went into businesses that he could shut the door on the weekend and he could be yeah. home with his family. A lot of people don't have that. When they have entrepreneurial parents, they say, I never saw my dad. Absolutely not. Every weekend we were going camping or we were every evening we were going on walks and bike rides. We traveled the whole world. Thank God. Like we, we saw everything. He really made sure we were well-rounded. Um, and my mom is very religious and my dad is very, um, very very intelligent and a very hard worker so i literally feel like i got the best of both worlds from them and i honestly like there's nothing about my childhood that they didn't make perfect for me so that was i really grew up with that but as i get older i can see the effects that that have on other people as well too i can see people who are in similar situations as me and they don't know how to hustle because every single thing has been given to them and so I think that's really still just played a role in how I am today because I, I want to prove, I want to make them proud. And I was actually on a call with my dad last week and someone asked him, they said, you know, what is your business strategy for the future? You know, what is, what is your goal? What's your plan? What are you trying to do? He's like, all I care about at this point in my life is making sure my children are so strong, so strong that they propel anything that I built 10 times forward. And that just melted my heart. Cause he's never said that to me directly, but, um, it brings me back to memories. You told me like, what was it like when you were in school? I would sit at home. I was doing my homework. I would do it in the kitchen counter every night. And I would just sit and talk to him. He would, I just, I didn't really realize that we were, we had this ritual at the time, but now I realize it was a ritual. He would come and we would just talk for hours and hours about anything and everything, but especially business. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little emotional, but like that was, cause <laughs> I've never really table. talked about, I've yeah. never really talked about this, but um, that was what it was like growing up for me. And every day I work with my family and I'm so close with them. Um, and every day I still get to learn from them. Like sometimes they tell me like my weakness is point blank and it's like hard to hear that from your family. But at the same time, I'd rather hear it from them than anyone else. So yeah, 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 definitely. No, for sure. So I think it's, yeah, it's important to, to look back and, and see the, the patterns in, in the things that your parents were engaging in because they're doing it for a reason, you know. So I had another guest actually, um, Rebecca Kassoon. She's like an aspiring actress in, in America. And, she, her dad was a similar situation to your dad where he started multiple businesses um, and he'd had the rough upbringing, but he would wake up, like he, he would wake her up every day when she was younger and say, you are a leader, you know, you are great, get up and, 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 you know, step into your greatness. And she was like, oh, shut up, dad, you know, I wanted to sleep. But <laughs> he was reprogramming her subconscious mind, you know, by saying it first thing in the morning. And then in the car, instead of listening to music, they would listen to audiobooks. And, she, you know, as a child, you don't realize what's happening. You think, oh, this is boring. I want to change it. But it's it, it's actually shaped the way that she thinks now and i can see that being the same thing for, for you and the way that you have an outlook on life because you you seem like you ha almost have like this hunger to yeah make something of yourself even though it's being given to you and it's it's important because 
at the end of the day, people can still come and say to you, oh, you know, oh, you got it easy because your dad gave it to you. And the thing is, I used to be one of those people that thought like that because I, I'm not entitled. I, you know, my parents, they've, they've done really well to provide a roof of my head and, you know, water, shelter. I, I've never been deprived of anything, but I wouldn't say it's where I want to be for the rest of my life. Like I have plans to make, take the, what they've built and 10x, 100x it. Well, that's what every parent wants for their child. They don't want you to be where they are. They want you to be further than that. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, as you're talking, I thought of the story that I'd, I'd heard a little while ago of Alexander the Great and his dad. Yeah, because his dad, Philip of Macedon, had conquered so many countries. And, you know, Alexander the Great was young, but he was ambitious. And he thought, oh, you know, I'm always in the shadow of my dad. You know, what can I do? What can I do to just step out of it? Because everyone keeps thinking that I'm only great because of my dad, you know, because he's right. and he's looked after me. So he went out and he was like, what's the one thing my dad hasn't been able to accomplish? And I think it was like the Arab lands or whatever it was at the time. And he was like, that's yeah. what I'm going to do. And then he went out and made sure he conquered them. And so he could make a, a name for himself and people would remember him for that. And I love that you're doing that for your brand and for what you're trying to create because you're stepping away from the shadow of what your, your dad and your mom gave you to say, okay, it's fine, and I appreciate it, and I'm grateful for it, but at the same time, I'm separate. I'm a separate human being, and I've been brought here for a different reason, and I need to I need to let that shine before I go as well. Yeah, and that's exactly what's happening right now. So my dad built up a lot of physical brick-and-mortar businesses. Physical, so that being the key. So I was like, what's the one thing my father hasn't done? He hasn't gone to the internet yet. He hasn't gone onto social media. And then so I remember the day that I told him I'm, getting like a mil I'm acquiring a million followers, and he's like, he looks at me, he's like, what do you plan on doing with that? And I'm like, dad, just watch, just watch. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, you know, and uh, like that was, it, it's interesting to show him something that he's not, he doesn't really quite understand yet. And I remember at first um, he was almost upset. He was like, what are you guys doing spending on your phone all this time? Like focus on work. And I'm like, don't worry. I am like, just trust me, trust the process. And uh, like, at first he's like, okay, like, let's just see what happens. Let's see where this goes. But I remember, like when my Bumble Brain Box business started gaining traction um, and I finally started seeing that those reoccurring sales start to build up. I just, I remember putting the numbers in front of him one day and I just saw his like face light up and he was like, I'm just so proud. Like, I can't believe that this has happened. You know, this is that you've, you've managed to do this online. And that was just such a good moment because it was like that Alexander the Great moment where you're, you're venturing off, you're trying something different. At the same time, you're afraid of falling on your face massively and like like failing and losing and um and you don't want to let your family down by showing them failure but you have to because once you're getting away from things you're gonna fall on your face a few times right and so we were talking about this before but i did kind of kind of fall on my face with bumble brain box after doing after achieving some degree of success i damaged my health to the point where i had to sell it and so that's part success part failure right but i remember thinking like okay, there's lessons in this and I had to go through it and I had to learn. Even though my dad taught me work-life balance my whole life, I had to realize that because I strayed from it, this is why this happened. And so for anyone who is branching off from their parents, you are going to fall on your face a couple times and it's so enticing just to go back into the folds of your family and just live comfortably. But I refuse to let that happen. Like I don't care if I fall on my face a million times as long as I'm falling forward, not backwards. So yeah I see that's the key because you see you've changed the perspective of, of failing to moving still moving forward even though you fail you're still moving to the next step and it's part of the whole process of moving toward your goal or or what you think is a, a success and that's the way i see failure because i had a few businesses i'd started and not all of them have done well you know a few of them have money flushed down the toilet and the thing is i don't see it that way i see it as eventually having brought me to where I'm right now, you know, even though I'm not doing that anymore, it shaped the character and taught me the lessons I needed to know to eventually be able to take part in this podcast with you and, and build the community that I'm trying to build now. So, um, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. So I was doing a bit of, um, reading on you earlier and I saw, um, I think I can't remember what it was. It was one of the, uh, must've been one of the interviews that you did, uh, not too long ago. And you went through, you know, before you became the person you are at the moment, you went for a bit of depression. So I was just curious to know what helped you realize, you know, what caused that and how did you come out of it? Because I personally do know people who've gone through it and who are still going through it. And it's difficult to always pinpoint what it is exactly that's causing it. Sure. Um, I haven't finished going through it yet. 
So let's like, I want to be very honest. And this is something I haven't really talked about much, but I think I will be opening up about it as we're speaking this week. Okay. This is, this is how powerful this is. I quit antidepressants entirely uh, last week. My body is fighting withdrawal so bad. It's kind of like a nightmare. And that's, that's going on right now, like as we speak. So I think that's really powerful pe to people, for people to hear because they're like, oh, you know what? Like, I'm never going to be anything. I'm going to be depressed. I'm going to be anxious, whatever. Um, and I'm, never, I'm not going to be able to achieve anything. I feel like the greatest people I've met in my life are all a little bit like, what's the right word? We're not quite crazy. <laughs> uh, how do I say this without offending anyone? We're all just a little... <laughs> We're all a little bit just, you know, something is slightly off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I think my anxiety and my depression are my fuel. And it's so crazy because it's like a voice in my head that just won't let me stop ever. And I think that's the anxiety. And by trying to fight it off, like it's not something, like as if it's something terrible, has been, um, I don't know. It's, it's like doing a disservice to something that's brought me this far. However, uh, I don't think anyone really should live with anxiety and depression, like to a point where it's crippling. So I've just engaged in a lot of positivity, right? Like, um, I just, uh, I, I have my motivational and positive blog for the, for that exact same reason, because it, it's like my therapy. It keeps me in a very positive headspace. So I don't know. This question is just so complex because I'm going through it right now. I just decided, you know what? I'm and so I feel so happy. I feel so healthy. I'm just going to quit this shit and I'm just going to proceed um, and see where my mind takes me. And it's, scary and it's beautiful and it's inspiring and it's exciting all at once and it's just i haven't fully uh i haven't fully understood it but i hope that that answer helps anyone who might be going through what i'm going through today because that's the realest answer i can give you is that i'm not fully out of it i think it's something i'm always going to experience in phases and i'm okay with that yeah yeah for sure and i think i think that's the thing like you know you're you're happy to to sit with it and to let it unfold by itself rather than um being upset by it you know and, and constantly trying to run away from it because it's a part of you but it's it's a part of you only for this period in your life you know as you said it's not going to always be there you're slowly going through the phases of letting it unfold and the other yeah. thing you said was you had the your motivational blog you you're all, you you know you've always been interested in writing so i think there's almost, it sounds like there's almost been like a part of you that was suppressed, that's been expressed through your writing and it's allowed you to sort of be mentally freer and allow that space, that part of you to, to come out. Well, yeah, well, not quite. It's kind of like fighting the darkness, right? It's so funny. I just watched Star Wars this week and I keep talking in Star Wars metaphors and my husband's like, stop, you're not a Jedi. Okay, but like the way I see it, my blog is like the light. <laughs> and uh, like my anxiety my depression is the dark right but the dark side has like some merit to it like yeah. a little bit you know and like I feel like you have to have both sides to appreciate if you only have happiness and never any sadness you don't fully appreciate happiness and I think that's where I'm at I feel like my life I live it in such extremes that that's why I'm like the most motivational positive person but I'm also <laughs> fucking depressed like and anxious at times like I need this to go back and forth because it's like a weird kind of balance but it's a balance of extremities if that makes sense yeah so um it's it's interesting but I have noticed that when I started a motivational account I didn't even care if I was helping anyone else I started like uh, man, I became so like extra. Like I was like, I'm just going to go out and I'm going to do everything. And I just became so motivated. And I was like, I didn't realize that quotes or just like motivational videos could do this to me. Like I didn't realize how essential motivation was until I implemented it into my own life. And a funny story is I'm not physically fit at all. But last month I did this like 10 mile hike up this mountain and like I wanted to die. It was like being on the Stairmaster for six hours. And I just kept saying all my motivational quotes to myself. And like my friend even turned back and she went down this mountain. I'm like, I didn't come this far just to back down now. And she's like, hey, Sanya, you go for it. So like, I like went up to this mountain. I'm like, done. And I could not move for like the next three days. But um, like, I feel like it's been good because it's been such a strong antidote to like the other things that I have going on in my head. Um, and there's also, I mean, I don't know how deep you want to get into this. There's kinds of anxiety. There's certain types of anxiety and depression, right? There's some that are environmentally created, which, you know, I don't think if someone's in your life that's causing you depression or if some, 
physical part of your life is causing you depression, you should live with it. But there's some people who are truly artistic and great and it's just a chemical imbalance. And if you take those chemicals away from them or if you try to mess with those chemicals, they, don't, they, lo they lose who they are. So, I mean, this is a really long topic in itself and I'm not an expert on it by any means, but there's certain types of anxiety and depression that can be very interesting and that you may want to live with and there are some types that you need to shut up you need to clear your life of so i mentor quite a few people um through my blog as well a lot of i'm working with a lot of suicidal people um through my uh sanya kelji and lose your legends account so if anyone in your podcast is experiencing anything and they want someone to talk out to, to about this i will always respond to those messages i will never ignore a suicide message so please reach out to me yeah, for sure. Um, you know, that, that's, it's very nice of you to share that. And I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that are looking for help um, and, and, and would appreciate, you know, a, an ear. Because a lot of people, all they want is someone that can listen to them because they're surrounded with people that just don't care, you know. And everyone wants to feel like they matter. So it's important for, for, someone, for, the, for people to know there's someone out there that actually cares. So for sure, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all the links in, in the uh, description for this podcast. So if anyone wants to reach out to you, I think uh, you'll be an amazing person for people to speak to. So um, on the note of um, surrounding yourself with the right people, you know, I, I know that you find it um, very important to surround yourself with the right types of minds, but it's, it's difficult for people who are stuck and sort of on their journey on their own. And like, for example, say they're on, their nine to, uh, on a nine to five job, they've just graduated, you know, they're kind of lost in life and they're like, you know what, I know I need to get around the right people. How, do, how would you advise someone to do that if they're, they're just feeling really lost and they're stuck in a job and it's like, well, my friends and family are just crap. How would I go about meeting those type of people to actually get myself out of the environment I'm in? Yeah, um, I can pretty much speak, though I don't work a nine to five, I can really uh, speak well to that question because in my small business, um, I employ a lot of teachers and they are amazing, they're passionate, uh, some of them, but um, I could never relate because I never had any other really entrepreneurs around me other than my family. I had my family with me, but that's like four or five of us and the rest are teachers and I couldn't connect i couldn't i couldn't talk entrepreneurship with them so uh you know while they're amazing people i just i couldn't connect on the level that i needed and a lot of my family and friends are in oil and gas i mean i'm in houston they're working nine to five jobs and i just started to feel what is it like stifled like i just felt alone for a very long time and i mean i would go out to visit my friends in san francisco and i mean everyone's an entrepreneur there like if you're not an entrepreneur you feel left out in san francisco so i mean it's it's just I just felt kind of lonely in Texas for a while. Um, and so, I mean, it sounds kind of silly, but I got on social media. If anyone, I mean, look, it doesn't matter if you're sitting at your job, you're probably on your phone for some part of it, if not a lot of it, or your computer. The most amazing, phenomenal beings exist online. Okay, a lot of my best friends I have never actually met. And it, it sounds creepy to those who haven't actually started doing it. It's not like, tinder or something where you're swiping and you're just hitting on everyone you meet right i get a lot of inappropriate messages too that but i just ignore them but um there's a lot of genuine people like for example you and i um um you know you just messaged me i was like hey let's talk let's get on here now and i put a face to the name um of course if you're ever in the u.s i'm gonna tell you to come to texas if i'm ever in england i'm gonna meet you up like it's just that's how friendships form and whether or not we actually physically ever even meet each other, what's going to end up happening is we'll probably be messaging back and forth. I'll probably ask to interview you after this, you know, and like that's how creatives form. And so the way that I um, specifically, so let's get very tactical now. The way I specifically reach out to people on social media is I have two or three different ways to do it. Um, one is that I want to meet different influencers and entrepreneurs because that's what I'm interested in. So I find different bloggers and I ask them, can I use your photo uh, layered with my quotes? And when that happens, some people are saying yes, some people never respond, but I like to start conversations. Hey, it's really interesting what you're doing. Just tell me about yourself. And I'm just really friendly. Some people reciprocate, some people don't. It's okay. It doesn't really matter. Stop being scared. What's the worst that someone's going to do? You're not going to hit it off with someone who you only know their username. Like, it's totally okay. Um, then I, just like you, I interview people a lot. I go live every Saturday on my Facebook page for Losers to Legend. And on Sunday, I go live every every Sunday at uh, 10 a.m. on uh, Houston time on my Instagram page. And I just bring in lots of interesting people every single week, every single time, and I just form connections. And guess what? I only bring on people that I can see myself being friends with because that 
is going to be so useful to me in the long term because I will have this wealth of knowledge and they'll have that wealth of knowledge in me and we'll be able to collaborate and synergize. And when they have that book come out or that course come out, I'm going to promote the crate, the hell out of it on my page. And anything that I can do to help them, I will. And that is how you meet people online. And if you are not an entrepreneur yet and you want to get around entrepreneurism, get on social media, build a brand around what you're passionate about and then move forward, like um, start connecting with people and just building your network. And that's exactly what my course is going to be about. The one that I'm putting together for 2018 is building that network and building that following and building that depth in your brand. And guess what? I have a million followers right now. Okay. I haven't tried to monetize it yet, but I have made 0.00001% off of that than what I built from my social media that had 10,000 followers. So don't get caught up in the numbers either. Okay. Because it doesn't matter how many people you have, it's the quality of it. So, um, it's just, that's a lot of thoughts all at once, but yeah, yeah. that's, um, again, if you're at a nine to five job, get on social media, get on apps, get on LinkedIn, get on Facebook, meet people. It's totally okay to send someone a friend request that you don't know. They might think you're a creep. It's okay. If they don't think you're a creep, great. Proceed forward. Yeah, 100%. I agree because that's, that's the mindset shift I've had recently of Instagram. I used to be that, that person that was stuck up on the numbers. I was like, oh man, how do you get more engagement? How do I get more followers? And when I started to take it seriously and decided, you know what, I'm going to turn this into a community and this is going to be my sole focus of just building a massive platform of just legends in the making that people can learn from and feed off of, I stopped caring about the numbers. And I started caring more about the actual content and what I was delivering. And that's how all these doors open. That's how I connected to you. And I had the courage to reach out. And the thing is, half the people, as we were saying in our conversation before, that I could only imagine connect, connecting and collaborating with years ago, I messaged them and I'll get a message back in a few days and just they'd be like, yeah, cool, let's do it. And the, the reason being is because you have a purpose or a passion that sets them on fire as much as it sets you on fire and they can they can resonate with that and they want to be a part of it you can't just want to feed off people for the sake of it like oh tell me this you know oh can you because i get so many messages on instagram with people that have got less than 10k followers saying um can i add you into my engagement group or can you tell me how, how to get more likes and it's they're so they're, they're not ready in the evolution of their pro process to have that many likes and followers because they're too stuck up about the things that don't matter. You know, the numbers don't matter. Worry about your content. And the way that you worry about your content is to figure out what, what it is you want to share. You know, be as authentic as possible. If that's just documenting your life, so be it. If it's, if it's creating um, uh, quotes for a page like you've done, so be it. You know, as long as you're doing what you feel is lighting you on fire, other people and the right people will start to find it. You know, and then that's how you build the uh, followers and the likes. So, no, it's exactly. And let me tell you a story about this because it's, I think, pretty relevant. Um, when I became a Huffington Post contributor, um, I messaged. Do you know who Neil Patel is? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I went through a lot of his content, and when I was doing SEO. Oh my god, he is the godfather of marketing. Um, anyway. I was like this scared little girl and I was like, hey, Neil, I'm taking your class and I'm a fan and can I interview you for Huffington Post? And of course, he's got like a billion Huffington Post articles already out. But I was like, you know what? Just Let's just see what happened. I got a reply the next day saying, yes, let's jump on a call. And wow. then I interviewed him. That was my first. I was like, Neil, this is my first <laughs> interview ever. And he's just kind of like, okay. <laughs> I was like, I never get nervous. I was sweating bullets <laughs> and then like um anyway the article came out he shared it to like all of his millions of followers it just it exploded that was my first article um that was interesting uh second story that i have that bounces off of what you said is a lot of people uh, message others and they don't they just ask for their benefit they're so worried about what they will receive yeah. that they forget that you have to give first so that's going to be a huge practical advice is whenever you're meeting someone don't turn them off like if you had messaged me like hey do you want to be part of an engagement group i would have ignored you however you offered me value you offered me a chance to be interviewed and exposed to your following and your audience that's value first and now you know that anything you need in the future i'll try my best to help you because you've given me value first Okay. And I think interviewing people is a phenomenal way to do that, but it doesn't just have to be interviews. If you're a photographer, cause there's so many photographers out there, 
just reach out to people and say, hey, listen, you're a phenomenal influencer. Can I do a photo shoot with you? Um, and just all I'm asking in return is that you tag my photos. Okay, let's say you get in front of a, a blogger who's a million uh, followers and you just, they put you and they tag you and all of a sudden everyone explodes because all these people find out about your photography skills and you just up. Or let's say you're a videographer or a graphic designer, an accountant. Gosh, can I help you with your accounting? Yes, please take my numbers. You know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. There's value that you can offer as a person to someone else and figure out what you can offer and just start offering that to people. Don't start reaching out to people. Like, I hate people on social media for like, Hey, cool picture. Come check out my link. Yeah, I, yeah. Just, <laughs> I just want to like go off at them and I'm like, just restrain. Um, go around the internet and give people shit for free. Yeah. See what happens instead. It's a mindset change. And when you start doing that, the doors will just open for you. You'll gain that traction just like you're experiencing in your own life right now because you're doing it right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly, 100%. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I've been able to speak to, to millionaires over the last few months and I've never done that in my life. You know, like you, when you're speaking to Neil Patel, I, I was just sweating, thinking, oh, wow, like, is, is this really me having a conversation with them? You know, I haven't earned my millions yet, which will happen over time, but it's like I've dreamt of having a network full of these people that think exactly like me and are, and are either on their way there or have, have already gotten there and are moving levels above where I am. And it's funny because, it, as we were saying earlier, everything happens at the right time and it just falls into place, but you have to be willing to give out value first. And... You, for you to do that you need to figure out who you are and what you can actually bring to the table you know so yeah it's a value exchange and when i talk to people now right i kind of start to subconsciously categorize are they leech are they offering value or yeah. are they really driven do i really just want to help them like there's some people that i help that i know they will never not never that's a very strong word but they likely are going to be in a situation where i probably won't ever get anything back um and that's totally okay with me. But like, they have such a good heart that I want to help them. So, I mean, people can see to a person's soul rather quickly. First impressions matter a lot. Just give, just try to help people. Just try to be real. Try to not be full of yourself. Just try to, um, you know, just help people. It's hard to not to be, to be very like, um, like not narcissistic when people are telling you to interview and talk about yourself. And you're like, how do I talk about myself without like, you know, while, while still being humble and just realizing that I'm still, I just have so far to go. It's, it's, it's still a balance, you know, yep. but um, just be, just be real and just be caring about people. Give away value. Just be genuine. People can see that right away. Like, you know, like we're meeting for the first time today. You can tell you're just such a good person, you know, and that's all that really matters. Yep. I think. Yeah. No, thank you. That's, that's humbling to hear for sure. And I, I'm, I'm happy to think that that, that is my first impression because I got the same from you, um, you know, having uh, only seen your content and not actually speaking to you before this. So, I, yeah. I, you know, what we said at the start, you can tell from someone's energy straight away if that's someone you want to speak to again or if it's someone you're just going to say goodbye to and that's, that's the end of that and shut the door on them, you know. And for sure, I think this connection is like I found a newfound friend almost, you know, yeah. on the other side of the world. And authenticity matters so much when you're building your, a business. Like, if you start to, like, sugarcoat things and tell lies with your story, like, I could have easily told you, hey, no, I'm over my depression and anxiety. I find it more valuable to tell people, no, I'm actually getting off my medication now, and we'll see what happens. You know, I find it more interesting, more complex, because we're all human, and no one's actually very successful, and no one's actually too busy for you, okay? If I wanted to, if Neil Patel should be one of the most busiest people in the world. However, he, he makes time for what matters. And someone could reach out, like before I acquired a large following, I used to think that talking to an Instagrammer or a Facebooker with over a billion followers was like impossible. Yeah, I mean, we do get a lot of messages, but like we try to genuinely get back to as many as possible. So don't worry about if someone has a large following. Just like how you reached out to some, like the, I think you said Joel Brown. Yeah. Um, he's got so many followers, but I mean, you just reached out to him and look what happened. And it doesn't matter how many people you have following you. It really doesn't because if you're, you can break through that noise by being real and genuine. Yeah. 100%. You can, you can. And that's the advice that I, I was given by Joel Brown recently as well. You know, just share, share your story, share who you are. And there's, there's actually um, someone I spoke to yesterday. His name is Maynor De Leon from Chicago. And he's, he's, like a, he's basically massively overweight. But the reason I wanted to get him on is because he made a, he made a vow to himself that he would go through a massive transformation um, health-wise. And the thing is, 
the reason he's got such a high engagement and following on Instagram is nothing special about him. I've spoken to him. He's just motivated and he, he documents every day. So from being 700 pounds to 600 to 500, and now he's on the road to, to losing wow. even more. And he's not scared just to flip the camera, you know, flip the camera on, on Instagram and just to share every day. And the, the reason me and him were speaking yesterday and we said, I think the reason that people vibe with him is because they can see that in the fitness industry, you see so many, uh, you know, models in bikinis and topless and stuff like that. And you, people can't really resonate with that. Yeah, it's, it's good. You know, you have a, a role model to aspire to, but you can't, they're not on the same page as you right now today. And he is, he's going through the journey with you. And that's why he has so many people supporting him. And that's why I think so. Because they want him to win. They want him to succeed. And that's always, there's one guy that I know, and you always hear like, oh, how I went from zero to a million, right? Yep. He's not at a million yet. He's documenting every step of the journey. And you just want him to win so bad. You want to help him get there. Like, it's just, you're rooting for him almost. So I think that's really, really interesting. But a note on that too is, if you share yourself so openly and authentically, you get some trolls. And how to do, like, whenever I go live, I have, like, a tribe of trolls that just joins. And they're like, hey, shut up. You don't have anything to say. You're ugly. Get off the screen. I'm so bored. And then I'm just like, it's so funny because um, a lot of times they say it to me in a different language. And I just repeat it back to them in, like, a funny accent because I don't really know what I'm saying. <laughs> But I know what I know what they're saying, but like I just say it back in a funny accent, and it's just so fun to mess with them because when they realize yeah. they can't touch you, and they realize they can't get to, through your barrier and your shield of positivity, um, it can become interesting. So I'm sure people like are really mean to him too, right? They're of probably course. like they're probably like, hey, you're so overweight. Like, why are you talking about fitness? Follow. It happens. People will find the the worst things to say. But you just got to be so secure with your story and know that it's going to help someone out there. That, and see, yeah. Yeah, no, no, go on. Carry on. Sorry. No, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think it starts with having confidence in yourself because when you realize that your message is bigger than you, it almost doesn't matter what other people think, you know, because you're there to help and to share. And, and also, when you have haters, and I've had, I haven't had loads of these, um, because I don't have a massive following, but I've had a few messages where people are like, you know, um, you know, they, they hate what I'm saying or like, oh, you're, you're talking a load of garbage in, in the comments in my post, right? And I wouldn't really comment back. I don't engage in that because I realize that they're talking from their level of awareness, where they are in their life. That's that mm -hmm. they're talking. They're not talking from where I am in my life right now, because if they were, then they wouldn't be saying that. So, and that goes for anyone and anything, your dad, right. your, dad your friends haters, lovers, whatever it is, everyone talks from their level of awareness, from what they understand and believe about the world. And so... Exactly. You know. um, well, that's more mature than me reading their messages and funny accents. <laughs> but but um, I have had like, uh, like really rude comments before. And I, uh, I, what I did, and this is something I saw Gary Vaynerchuk doing. So I was like, you know what? That's so beautiful, the way he addresses like criticism. He apologizes. He apologizes to them for not being who they need him to be. And it's really interesting, like, uh, maybe that's not exactly the way he perceives it, but he just says, hey, I'm so sorry if my, co my content offended you. Let me know. I just, I, I'll ask people, like, they'll comment and I'll say, okay, please let me know how I can improve. I really appreciate you taking the time out to give me your feedback. Any suggestions you have would really help me. And I've gotten people back who are just like, they were just like, well, like, they're like, I just, they, I don't know what back. to say. Yeah, yeah. They didn't expect you to respond. Yeah. So... Of course, you can respond with funny accents. You can respond yeah. with not responding, or you can respond with asking for advice. And I have found that the last, the, the last one works the most effectively because sometimes you'll get really, really good feedback. Yeah. Or some of my most loyal followers now are the ones that um, that uh, they couldn't have cared for me. They didn't really care for me in the beginning. Yeah, so. yeah. No, that's it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to I, I didn't hear about. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk taking that stance because I, I mean I follow him but I didn't I obviously didn't come across that that video or that piece of content that he let out but it's interesting to hear that take on it because I've watched another video uh, I think it was Ty Lopez on Snapchat and he was saying how he had a few haters and he said all right cool he doesn't have a few he has a lot yeah, yeah. he has a <laughs> lot a yes. lot of haters well he uh, out, out of a, yeah he does that's true but <laughs> out of um, out of a lot of them there was a few that messaged him. I don't know what they said. They challenged him on, on I think it was on, uh, you know, his whole um, concept of reading um, and the importance of reading. 
and someone challenged him on it and then he said okay cool let's jump on a skype call and let's have this out live and i think you know that that's when they, that took them back because they're like what he's really going to take the time to speak to me so i guess that's another fun way to handle it you know get them live yeah. and challenge them on what they're saying yeah i think so um <laughs> sorry my cat's trying to jump in this live video <laughs> They're like, who is she talking to and why isn't she petting me? Yeah, um, yeah it, Ty Lopez, I have mixed thoughts on him because like you have to, he's, his brand is not authentic. However, it works so well for him. It works so well. So it's, it's very interesting to diagnose his, his brand and see what's working, what's not working. But the good thing is he's very good at getting people to talk about him. And I respect that. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Amazing marketer. You know, he's got, he's made a lot of money from it. So yeah, for sure. You can't, he, can't, um, can't fault his, his way of doing things if it's working for him. It's working for him. It's interesting. I see so many Ty Lopez memes. It's so funny, but uh, yeah. you know what? He's, he's doing something right. Cause I don't see any memes about myself on the internet. Oh, <laughs> so, no, <yeah>. exactly. <laughs> so yeah. no, definitely. I agree with you a hundred percent on all of this. Sure. So, I mean, last three questions to wrap this up that I ask everyone. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this. So first one being, if you had the knowledge and the experience that you've got now, you to go back to your 18 year old self, what would you tell her if you, if you could tell her anything? Yeah. Um, so what I would tell myself in that situation is um, take control of your life. Don't play the victim mentality because a lot of teenagers get into the victim mentality and they think, oh, I can't be happy because X, Y, Z. I can't achieve this because X, Y, Z. You know, I play the victim mentality for so long. Um, it don't just take ownership of your life. And there was something that I read um, in the seven habits of highly effective people that started me on this journey. And I talk about it all the time. There's a little diagram and it goes from dependence to independence to interdependence. Very simple concept, but basically don't go from dependence to interdependence automatically. You have to go through each stage. I was going from dependent, which is dependent on my family to interdependent, which is relationships. And I never took the time to find who I am in the circle of all this. So if I could go back, I would tell myself, don't be the victim take control, take ownership, find out who you are before you jump to that next step. And that, that has served me very well now is to follow that diagram that Stephen Covey laid out. Amazing. Yeah. I've I've read that book as well. And that's definitely an amazing diagram for sure. Um, So the second question is if you could write anything um, for your great, great, great grandchildren to read in the time capsule, what, what would you write to them? Um, well, it's a book that I want to write. Um, I want to write about social media. I want to write about the fact that 10 years ago, I wasn't even allowed to be on Facebook. I wasn't even, I was not, I was forbidden from being on Facebook. My Facebook had to be deactivated because someone thought that that wasn't right. And, um, for to go from that to 10 years later and then having that million followers, um, I want to show people what that journey looks like from an emotional standpoint, from a business standpoint, an entrepreneurial standpoint, a self journey, self development standpoint. I think that story is the story of my life. I think it's. I think it really needs to be shared with my future family members and with other people who are figuring out how do they go from a victim situation mentality situation to building that legacy from that loser to legend standpoint. And that's. I, I can't wait for the day where I'm able to write that book and have that book truly and essentially come out i think that's going to be the pinnacle of what i want to leave behind amazing amazing so that leads me to the last question you're 90 years old now you're looking back on your life what's what's the legacy that sonia wants to leave behind oh man i want to i just want to spread fire like everywhere like i know that makes me sound like a pyromaniac but (laughs) i just want to spark a fire in every person that i meet I just want them to realize their full potential. And I want my legacy to be the legacy of others. Like I want to inspire you so much that your life just changes entirely. And you, you can trace back the way I trace back to Stephen Covey. You can trace back to somewhere along the way you met me. And just that would be the most amazing thing in the world, you know, along with family and along with religion, you know, along with being a good person and having that strong faith and, you know, that it's just, there's so many layers to that question, but really I just wanted to have sparked a fire in every person that I meet and to spread the concept of greatness. Because ever since I was young, like I told you, there was two concepts that really stood out to me. One was the, my time, 
and one was greatness. Like I've always just in my head, just be great, be great, be great. Like every day, just like you told me about your friend that you interviewed and her dad would wake her up and tell her, hey, let's go out and be great today. It's just in my head. And I just, I just want that to be part of the legacy. Just show people exactly what the path of greatness looks like in the context of their own lives. I can I literally feel the fire as you're talking already yeah. <laughs> through the screen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, I love it. I love it. I love it because we need we need more people like that because you're so tuned into what you who you are and what you want to share that it, people can just see it automatically. And I'm sure all the listeners can and can hear it and also see it in their mind as well whilst they're listening to you. Um, so no, thank you so much for taking the time to speak today. It's been an amazing, amazing conversation. I'm sure everyone listening is going to love it as well. And I definitely hope that we can keep in touch. Oh, well, for sure, for sure. Um, definitely. I'm going to have, I'm going to make you interview with me next. So <laughs> get ready for that. Yeah, I better prepare. <laughs> okay, awesome. So, all right. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. And of course, if there's anyone that's listening that I can be of service to in any way, if there's anyone who's struggling with anything or has any questions, I do try my best to get, respond to as many as possible. Um, so for sure, I'm more than happy to help in any way. And of course, to you too, that offer extends to you. If I can ever help you in any way, just let me know. Amazing, amazing. As I said, I'll put all the links um, for all your resources in, in the description on the website and in the iTunes podcast um, summary box. So yeah, for sure, everyone will check it out there. So thanks again. Okay. And I'll speak to you. Thank soon. you.